Right, Mark, welcome back to the shop. So, this is uh, part two of piston carbon stuff. But, before I get to that, I want to get to something else. Um, I was doing this video, and as some of you may know, the sound cuts out on me. And I think I know what it is now. I think I've worked it out. Um, but sometimes the sound cuts out and I have to, uh, it's sometimes it's not all of it, it's kind of intermittent. So a, a lot of the times I will be doing this and then, oh, the missus will say, meh, meh, meh. I'll go, all right, so I'll, I'll stop the camera and then I'll come back, I'll press record again and the sound goes then, right? But I don't know. And then what happens is, is I'll go, oh, master of zoom. And as soon as I do master of zoom or something, the sound comes back. So what I'm saying is, is that some of the videos, they have sections that you don't know. I managed to salvage it. And what I'll do is, and this happens in movies all the time, is I'll record the sound over the top. Right? Um, or, like I said, I'll cut bits out. Or I'll do the video and I have to re-record it because some of it either corrupted or didn't sound the sound. Sometimes I've got to come in and just redo some bits. So I was measuring the... I think it was the balls... I was measuring the balls for the cylinder for the SV, and I was I said in there, I said because um, I'd already recorded that video, it already came out in our sound, and I also changed a few bits and pieces. I actually did that video twice um, because one I went down this big rabbit hole rant about fucking interferometry, which we not for this video. Uh, the video is already getting long enough when I look back at it, even though half of it was missing. So I had to re-record a bit of it, and I changed some of the things in the video. Like I said, I was talking about some things and some other. Any road, in the video, there's a fuck-up, right? There's a fuck-up that I didn't realise was even there. And a guy uh, pointed out, which was fine, but then he started basically calling me a twat, saying I don't know what the fuck I'm on about, which was quite funny. But I can kind of see where he comes from. And he was going on and on and on. I was like, I didn't do that in that video. I didn't do that in that video. And then I actually just thought, he kept on making the point and making the point and making the point. So I went back and had a look. I went, oh, fucking hell, yeah, that's the bit I changed. So I wanted to um, point out that why I fucked up, but how I fucked up. So in the video, um, I've got, I don't think it's this one. I've got the other one. But I've got a micrometer, and it's out of this set, right? So it's out of this set, and I'm um, fucking around. Right. And I'm like, um, oh yeah, so basically this is a vernier scale, right? And I'll go and get something that is a vernier scale. Uh, I think it's over here. Oh, I know it is. It's in the drawer that says measurements on it. No. Was oh it is it is it is it is fuck's sake I've just got so many of these bloody things right it's a tiny bit dusty where's that brush right so this is a um uh, vern uh, caliper fuck's sake this is a caliper oh, fucking hell fire oh that's gone a bit wayward. Uh, this is a caliper uh, with a vernier scale on it, and the way that these work, I'm sure I did a video on this, I'm sure I've done videos about this, but basically what happens is you measure something, and then this scale here, let me pull you in, master of zoom, oh please focus you fucker, there, so you're not going to see this very well. But it has a scale on here, but then it has another scale on here. And what you do is you go, oh look, it's 60, what's that? One, two, five, six. So it's 66 millimeters. And then you line up this scale here, this scale here, with whatever line it lines up with along this scale. Right? So in this case, because I'm just doing this randomly, it's five, six. So this is believe it or not. So I'll literally pull you in so you can see so I'm not having you on. Right, so what you're looking for without nudging it is you are looking for 
uh, which one of these lines and you'll see that the four doesn't quite line up with the lines the five does and then the six there that line lines up perfectly with the six uh, with a six yeah not on this scale at the top here on this scale down here whichever one of these lines lines up with it yeah it's a fraction it, it's a a division of 10 so this is 66.6 .6, and i just did that <laughs> literally just by doing this right <laughs> that was not intentional any road so that's a vernier scale and this guy started arguing with me saying you said in this thing that this is a vernier scale that this thimble malarkey here and i'm going on going yes it is a fucking vernier scale your bell end it has the dv the it has the scale around the drum and blah 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 and he's like no you're a prick stop whatever and i was like you're a fucking prick and we're backwards and forwards because i'm a hundred percent adamant because let me just pull this back out again when i recorded this video originally i used these right i use these because i've got a big one right and in the video in the video i talk about holding these in a vice or a clamp or something on these plastic bits like that it you know it's a nice flat surface all the way around where these ones don't have it they have this button but it's a, it's flush you see so i was like oh i don't want to use these I want to use these and I just got them out right I didn't think of anything but these are um, these are Imperial right these are Imperial oh for fuck's sake focus you fucker but as you can see if I bring you in there they have a vernier scale on which is this scale here you see this scale here on the side forget this one forget what's on the drum it's on this side this is the vernier scale so i was on the assumption as i was talking to him as he was calling me a knob and right, rightfully so i was under the assumption that i was the first time i did the video when i used these when i finished doing the video because i was talking about, oh you just grab them you, you clamp them on the ear and and then as I was going through the video, I was like, oh, when I did the original video, I said, oh, I've just worked out, I've just got the calculator out and worked out what the conversion on this is for our dial bar gauge, because it doesn't matter really what this says. It's just a, um, this is our direct measurement instead of our inferred one. So I did that. Then the video come back with fucking sound problems and all the rest of it. So what I did is I reshot those sections without that in. So... As I was doing the video, I went, oh, it's a vernier. I was like, oh, fuck's sake, it's not a bloody vernier scale, is it? Anyway, moving on. That's what I say in the video. I don't say literally that. I just look at it and go, oh, this isn't the one. This isn't the right one. But I just think, we'll just drop that and we'll move on. I should have said something in the video. And then when this guy was arguing with me, he's going on what I've published, which is totally fucking fine to do, where I forgot that I've done the wrong fucking, yeah. So I'm the tit. I did apologise to him and say, yes, I've just rewatched the video. It might be a good idea if I did that. <laughs> rewatch the video and I'm a tit. So, yes, he was right. This is not a vernier scale. This is just a micrometer. That's the vernier scale. That's the one I was thinking of because I did the video the first time. Blah, blah, blah. All excuses. Let's just go with it. And this one is even better. It's a digital one. So you don't have to bother with that fucking stupid vernier scale or this drum cylinder jobby. Blah. Done. Let's get on with the video. I wanted to put that at the beginning of the video. I know a lot of people probably switched off and bored and whatever. Um, I wanted to switch, um, do that at the beginning of the video because people tell me you can't take it when it's wrong, blah, 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 blah. Th that, there you go. See, I fuck up and I tell people I fuck up. Put, it's like this. People say, I think it's B. And I say, no, it's A. That's why I did the video on. I think it's B. And I say, well, if you think it's B, Prove it's B. Prove it's B. Blah, you're a fucking arsehole. Look, you can't accept when you're wrong. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Prove your point, tit. Any road. Oh, fuck me. In the first video, I was talking about carbon on the roof of a piston. And um, someone then said, no one has ever said that. Dude. Yes, they have. There's loads. I've had maybe four conversations about this. Someone says a message about something backwards and forwards. And before you know it. I'll even check and see if any of my comments 
um, say, because I'm sure I was arguing with someone in the comments about it, that every single milligram makes a difference. And I was like, yes, it does, but in reality, your pistons are out of that. Blah, blah. The carbon on the top, all this shite, all this, it's just nonsense. Any road. And the thing is, what I like to do is, I'm not just going to do one video and then leave it, right? This is an ongoing thing. It's bit by bit by bit. Take each case as it is. You know, there are people out there who want to do a video about pistons. They do a video about pistons. They miss half of it out. And then that's the piston video done. Why would they go back? Where I like to have this back forwards with you guys asking questions. Call me a prick and say you got it wrong and that's not a vernier micrometer and all this shit. You know, I like that. That's good. Any road. So... This is the next part of the um, piston carbon thing. A lot of people are saying in the video, uh, or in the comments and stuff, but what about insulation? Well, that's a totally different thing altogether. That's why I wanted to separate the two and not confuse anyone. So we've put to bed the whole thing about the mass, and the mass will basically make no difference because of deviations between piston sets and so on. This uh, piston, I took this in the tumbler, so I have a tumbler. Here's a little clip. We've got coffee, we've got this thing, <laughs> Dalek, right, Ooh, this fucking crazy thing. There are things I keep on saying that you don't see in the background, one of these being this. So this is a small version, a very small version, not the smallest version, but a small version of a tumbler. So what this thing does is this. It sh <laughs> it's an earthquake crater. Oh yeah. So what this is, is it's just a motor down at the bottom with a, an eccentric mass. So, and it does this, and this thing's suspended, and this just jiggles. Now in, at the moment, I'll take a picture, but at the moment there's nothing in there. right? So this is just a tub, just like a, a torus kind of jobby. I'll take a picture, I can't be asked moving the camera. Um, and it's just got, and it's got a lid, right? So this lid goes on top, like yada yada, and then this little wing nut jobby, right? And that's all it does, it just shakes. Now, you might, a lot of people don't know these exist. And there's loads of types, right? You can get big, um, big, like that, you know, you can get big, big as a house kind of thing. And you can get them as small as, some people make their own out of jam jars, just on a road, like some rollers, and an elastic band, and a motor, and it's all geared down so it turns slowly. The whole point of this is what this does is you put a part in. So let usually there's, there's there's several ways you can do this. So let me just explain one way first. One way is let me just grab one. Um, there we go. So, just say you have, just say a part, so just say this is a part that you're machining off and all the rest of it, and it has the raggy shit edges on it, or it has a section that's been cut that isn't, eh, or I'll tell you another one, uh, plasma cut stuff, or, you know, yeah, plasma cut stuff, plasma cam, when they cut stuff out, shapes and all sorts, they've got all these raggedy edges, and you're mass manufacturing these for a barbecue set or something. They then chuck these into basically what is a tumble dryer or a cement mixer or something not like this big industrial job is. But for smaller things, this is for small parts. This is for, um, a lot of people use them for gun shells, case, uh, cases. Yeah, the brass shells. You want to recondition them, pop out the percussion cap, put new ones in, blah, blah, blah. You want to do whatever. You can clean up your shells by chucking them in this thing. So... Um, I've got the, this stuff, so this, it looks like gravel, but I'll show you it, it's a mix is this actually, I've got some even bigger stuff and they're actually cones, but if I master zoom, yeah, like that, there we go, you can see that these are just triangles, abrasive ceramic triangles, and basically what happens is the action is just like doing, just like doing this, it's just the the random motion of just jiggling shit around and these will hit the little burrs and it's just death by a thousand cuts it's very light 
So I've got that stuff. That's for really cleaning some. Well, it's like I say for whatever. What I have also got is this stuff. This stuff here. And this smells great. This, believe it or not, is walnut shell. So this is. That's what it is. This is walnut shell. Shells of walnuts, right? And they're not really. You can blast with this stuff. Right, you can do like sand blasting, you know, media blasting. This is just churning that stuff up. And what it does, what I'll fish out of here. <coughs> I always get this stuff everywhere. Is it can polish. Right, so this is a car body. And you can see all the bits still in it. Because this is what I was doing last. This is a car body. And what it's done is it's knocked off all the sharp edges. Right, and it's give it this patina. You look at that this has been milled right it's been milled but it's give it this patina that was the the triangle well, i've got some other ones that are, it's almost like um fish gravel you know gravel you have in fish tanks that did this and then this one's come along this walnut shell and it's polished everything right it polishes everything if i can show you it polishes everything and makes it all oh like it's got like a soft well worn feel to it but it depends how long you keep it in here some of these like this was an aki spring right this was fucking absolutely horrible and it's just cleaned it up right it's just perfectly cleaned it up and you can see a bit still stuck in it you get it all out but any road so what i'm going to do is it, you can get them so the mirror polish shit depends what you use but what I'm going to do is take out all of these carb bits because that's the last thing I was doing in this and I'm going to because um, usually what I do is I tip I tip this out into well, whatever I'm doing but let me just fish out all the carb bits and then we'll crack on with what I'm actually doing after I pull you out right then so what I've got here is I've got a piece of, you know, you're not going to be able to see this, but let's just have a go anyway. So what I've got is a bit of aluminium, and I've left a burr on it. Oh, fucking, this is not going to be fun, is it? You can see across there, you can see that burr on there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to chuck that in, and we've got the S, oh, fucking, I'll pull back out. We've got the SV piston with all its carbon shit on it. And I am going to pull out the other circlip straight to my eyeballs like that, and then we're going to put this in here. And these these sides are plastic; these sides are hard plastic edges. So I'm going to get this shit. Oh, for fuck's sake! Every fucking time I do this, I do that. Like so, fucking hell, it's gone bloody everywhere, as per usual, and I'm not vibrating this on the bench, right, I've just got it up at bench level, oh fuck's sake, I've just got it up at bench level, so I can show you, so, I'll vibrate it up here for a bit, just so you can see, because tripod reasons and all this, and then I'm going to, it's going to go on the ground, and we're going to give it an hour, and then we'll see what's what. So, the whole point of this, we'll get our piston, we'll chuck that in, like so, and yeah, let's just, I can start it up. And you'll be able to see what happens, so let me just pull you in. <laughs> Right then, so our pistons are out to move it. I'm just going to hold this as. Oh, no, I'm going to hold the bear, sorry.
fact the matter is you might be like, well the piston's not really tumbling anywhere. Right. The piston's not tumbling anywhere. You're like, oh look, it's stuck in everywhere. Look, this is completely fucked. Blah 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 blah. Right, well we'll see, won't we? You know what I mean? We'll see what happens. In there, and I'll see you in a bit. And it just basically gets rid of the grime and shit if you're going to use media like that um i'll do a video on it right? we'll, put, we'll put some samples in and stuff like this for some of the thing like this as you can see it hasn't actually taken all the carbon off that's how soft this is right it just ba it hardly touches it even the ring bars even the bars in here it hardly touches it because it's not a real abrasive um it's not like sandblasting or soda blasting or anything shit like that, right? Uh, it's just to get the just to clean them up and get the shit off them, right? So what we're going to do is, um, the, like I said, this will be a track bike. It's going to get ragged, which is the best. This is a good way to do experiments and stuff like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this piston down the middle, not with a saw, just in theory. <laughs> Split this piston down the middle, and I'm going to polish one side, really fucking polish it, and on the other side, I'm going to leave it like this. All right, so this has been tumbled. All right, it needs washing. This is the next thing this needs is it needs a good soak. It needs just cleaning. Um, so I'm going to soak this. Get all the, there's just bits of tumble dust on it in the corners and stuff like that. Get it washed, and then split this up, polish one side, and then leave the other. And what we're going to do in um, X amount of uh, miles or whatever, how many, when I blow it up next, when I blow it up next, we'll have a look um, how much carbon is actually stuck on it. So we're starting from zero in a sense. So uh, people say, or people have asked and stuff about carbon as an insulator. So if you have a layer of carbon on top, it will insulate the piston um, thermally. Uh, yes, but the thing is, what happens is, is the carbon itself gets hot, and then the carbon heats up the aluminium. It's just a differing degree of heat transfer. Um, but the temperatures are so great, and the um, layer is so thin, and it's like I say, it's constantly been abraded, uh, uh, ablated. It's been washed away, and then recovered, and then washed away, and then recovered, and then washed away, and recovered, stuff like that. Um, it only really becomes a problem when your engine is old and you've got a lot of blow-by and a lot of oil is ending up on your piston or you've got a valve leak, um, a valve stem leak, a valve stem seal fucks up, especially on the intake side, because uh, when you draw the piston down, you'll get, uh, you know, it's basically creating a vacuum, so the pressure inside your actual head will cause it to go, you know, through the shortest path to the lowest pressure. So it's going to draw down your valve stem and take some oil with it. This is why there's quite a few engines out there that don't have valve stem seals on their exhaust side because the exhaust side is high pressure. So it'd be more likely to push it up. So it keeps the oil a bit. Uh, a lot of motorbike manufacturers and stuff don't bother. They just put valve stem seals on both sides. Why not? Fuck it. Because uh, they're cheap as fuck. Um, and it actually stops blow by going the other way. Uh, hot exhaust gases going into your... Um, into your cylinder head and by doing that you're enveloping the valve in hot gases so it's going to reduce the life of your exhaust valves or could potentially so uh yeah so if you have this carbon barrier so a lot of people will ask about detonation right so the thing with detonation is that if you've got that much buildup of carbon on your crown that you are causing detonation this thing's fifty thousand miles old there wasn't much carbon on this at all, and it wasn't detonating. There's, I can't see any any detonation um, signs or anything. It was behaved itself. It was absolutely fine. If you've got a 100,000-mile engine or a 150,000-mile engine, it's a bike engine, that kind of thing, and it's starting to detonate and stuff, that's because you've got probably so much fucking oil on top of your crown because everything's leaking. So... 
your valve stem seals are probably fucking half gone. The piston, the bores are starting to egg now. You know what I mean? They're starting to overlies. Everything's just starting to come to an end and start to die. So the the fact that you're pinging and fucking detonating like a bastard is the sign. There's loads of things that are the problem, not just the fact that you've got carbon on top of your piston. What I'm saying is, is if you then go, oh, fucking hell, I'll take my pistons out, I'll clean them off and I'll put them back in. Within no time, you are going to be suffering from the same problem. You know what I mean? So that's you're not, you're not, you're not curing any problem there. Um, the fact of the matter is a good, normal, healthy engine will have a system of, um, like I say, uh, an equilibrium of carbon on, carbon off, carbon on, carbon off, stuff like that. So nothing really changes... Um, you know, in that fact, the fact that people are increasing their, and I do find this funny, people are increasing their compression ratios to try and get a bit more out of their engines, uh, and we're talking bikes specifically. Yeah, I just don't, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Stop fucking around with stuff because you haven't done all the calculations. Um, your valves start to drop when you start doing stuff like that, right? You're putting too much stress on other things. Um, if you think, oh, well, I'll just shine my piston up or ceramically coat it or you know it's like people say oh the carbon on top is going to act as a heat insulator keeping more heat in the combustion chamber so you get more power out of it well that heat has got to go somewhere right and when you fucking do that like i say exhaust valves a lot of valve a lot of people when they start fucking around with compression a lot of people think they're going to melt pistons and they start having valve issues um if you've got an sv and you want more power Go and get a fucking R1, right? Or a GSXR, or uh, no, don't go and get a CBR. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And if and I, there has been a guy or two guys on this channel who have said to me, "I've got a fucking Panangali, right? And I've conquered it. It's it's not it's not powerful enough. I want more power. You're a tit, right? You're a fucking tit. I hope you know." If you want to re-comment so everyone can laugh at you and call you a tit personally, please feel free to do so. You're a fucking tit. Right? There is... You know, it's just... And, and these guys... Oh, I got. A, I want to go and get a H2. And then, you know, de uh, retune, remap it, all this shit. Take all the stuff off and make it into a fucking weapon. 250 horsepower weapon. Because fucking 200 or Fuck off. Right? Fuck off. You're, you're the twats who end up in the fucking edge bottom. Or end up riding off a cliff and then blowing yourself up like a twat. And straight line acceleration and wheeling is not skilled, right? Fucking Isaac can do that. Uh, you know, it's like this. I've got something and I want to make it more powerful. You know, a lot of people have said to me, why aren't you getting... Um, you could get some race pistons for it. You could increase the compression. You could get the TL, um, you know... Uh, cams for it and do all the time why the whole point is is that if you get someone who's really really experienced at doing track days just on track right a really experienced almost racer you know amateur racer they'll be able to go around that track so much fucking quicker than i could right why does my bike need more power i can't even get the most out of what power it has now i know there's some guys watching this going fucking what a pussy answer Prove it to me, right? If you want, if it's such a pussy answer, go and take your fucking GSXR thousand with your fucking expensive, sexy titanium exhaust. Take it to a track and put your money where your mouth is, and publish. Show us. Get your mates to get a GoPro. GoPros are great, actually. I don't behind your fucking, you know, I don't behind your fucking clocks and all that shit. GoPros are great because we can see when you cross the line and we can see when you finish. Right, and you can't. People try to fucking cheat, but you can tell by the frequency of the engine sound um, if you've sped up the footage or something like that. You know, so we don't even need a timing app or anything shit like that. Just show us the footage. Just show us how fucking quick you are on your fucking GSXR thousand. You probably actually go around a lot of these tracks quicker on a fucking GSXR six hundred. A lot of people don't realise that either. The reason why I'm using the SV is because the SV died. I'd already got the Z900 as my bike bike to replace it. And it's two things are going to happen to it. 
well, three things. I can either just fucking sell it, uh, you know, sort the gearbox problem out and just sell it, or I could make some stupid bone ass project out of it when I try and turn it into a sofa or something, you know, old Dell fashion, or turn it into a track bike and, you know, have fun with it. You know what I mean? And in the meantime, use the bike as an opportunity to show all sorts of things through the channel. You know what I mean? Um, and like I say, the only thing I'm really going to change at all is the exhaust system, because why not? I've got a YouTube channel. The tail, because why not? I've got a YouTube channel. That's an excellent chance to take the piss out of the balls and people saying, you do it! Oh, I'll fucking do it then. The suspension and the brakes, right? Because the suspension and the brakes are the most important thing when you're going to go to a track, right? Doesn't matter. This engine could be down on power. Fuck me. I went... Um, is Donny um, with Andy and Tim, the pedo, and James. And <laughs> James was slower than Andy, right? And he was making all his excuses going, it just feels like it's got no grunt. Any road, it actually didn't have any grunt. What had happened was is the guy who rebuilt the engine, uh, the timing was out, so it really was down on power. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so everyone was cute. Oh, of course it's fucking slow. It's you, your bell end. It actually, no, it was the bike this time. Um, but, yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, the whole carbon argument is a bit of a... That, let's get back full circle, back to the actual fucking whole point of the video, you bell end. The whole carbon argument is a bit of a... There isn't an obvious answer. Um, because you're trying to... Different engine designs. Failure of some engines because they're spewing out too much oil or age. Versus... Is it insulating the piston and protecting the piston by then later on fucking your valves over? Or is it acting as a pre-ignition um, detonation issue because of oil bleed by blah, 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 blah? If your engine is in good condition, right, so everything, the clearances are, are within, within limits, within the tolerance of what's acceptable, and so on and so forth and all them things, then... This whole carbon, not carbon, carbon, not carbon thing, it really doesn't matter. And, you know, to show that, we're going to go on half and half. I'm going to mirror, almost try and mirror polish the living shit out of it and uh, see what the difference is, you know what I mean? Does mirror polishing... Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, instead of doing that, because it's not really going to show us something, we're going to see carbon and probably... I'll tell you what, one piston will mirror polish. One piston will leave like this. And one piston will mirror polish, so we'll clean this off, and the other one will mirror polish. And I want to see in the same engine. It's not per. Uh, it's not perfect. Cause I want it in the same cylinder because one engine, one cylinder might be leaking more oil than the other. Um, yeah, no, we'll do half and half. But we'll do half and half on both. So we'll do half and half on this, and half and half on the other one. So we can see a comparison between leaving it pretty much as is, just with the the excess taken off. And with this, which will be mirror polished, and we'll do both. It'll also give us an indication of which cylinders leak in the most. Um, you know, the measurements seem to come out all right, but you can't measure valve stem seals, you know, and how well they're sealing. Um, any road, a bit more of a shop chat this one because I wanted to get that micrometer thing, um, the micrometer boo boo um, out there, and wanted to talk a bit about this as well. Um, but the, the thing is with the other one with the carbon weight thing is that you hear that about a lot of things right you hear that about um, should I mirror polish my crankshaft so it's super slippy through the air or lightweight and so oil runs off it and all this rubbish and we're talking a hundredth of a horsepower which you will never ever 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 measure never mind notice hope that makes sense I'll see you in a bit